Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday night uh, service. Uh, we are glad that you have joined in. Uh, I have sent a couple of emails over the last couple of days introducing to you our Free Will Baptist uh, Jeremiah 29 initiative. Uh, tonight, I'm going to share with you uh, a scripture reading by uh, Clint Morgan, who is the uh, director of IM, who is our uh, international missions director, and he will be actually reading a portion of Jeremiah 29, followed by our executive secretary, Dr. Eddie Moody's uh, preview uh, video of just exactly what uh, Jeremiah 29 initiative is all about. And then going to follow it up with uh, a short video about how to get the most out of your quiet time. Over the years, I've heard many, many people struggle uh, to know really how to have an effective quiet time, and this will be a help to you. Of course, uh, the Bible readings this week are from Galatians, and uh, yesterday was Galatians 1, today was Galatians 2, and I trust that you will uh, join me in taking this uh, Jeremiah 29 initiative seriously and that it is something we can do together to grow deeper in our faith and our walk with God and encourage others to do the same. And so uh, I'm, I'm hoping that it will not be too much longer till we can add uh, our Wednesday night service back um, uh, to our schedule. Uh, we are considering what we can do with things like Awana, and our other small groups. And so you be praying uh, for that and for wisdom and discernment. And then also want you to be praying for this coming Tuesday, September the 8th, as we will begin in-person school. And uh, we are looking forward to a great year, but we're doing a lot of things to ensure the health and safety of not only our administration, faculty, and staff, uh, but also our students and parents and those that will be in the building. So God bless you for joining us tonight. Just want you to know, Annette and I love you all. Uh, we miss seeing you, and uh, we always look forward to Sunday. Uh, I know many uh, more are coming back. I want to encourage some of you maybe to come to the 8.30 service if you are concerned about crowds. We're not having as many at 8.30. And so uh, if you'd like to sign up for the 8.30 service, we'd love to have you. And then just remember also to sign up if you're coming at 1030, especially if you have children, we have uh, started our children's churches back. We have a nursery zero to two years old. Uh, we have a three, four and five year old children's church and then a sixth and up children's church. And so just want to make sure that you um, uh, also, if you're staying home to watch live stream, the only service on Sunday that is live streamed is our 1030 service. So again, thank you for joining tonight and uh, sit back and, and enjoy these videos and I, I trust they'll be a blessing and a challenge to you. We'll see you Sunday if uh, Lord willing and if not, we'll hopefully see you soon. Jeremiah 29, 4-14 through Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there, and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray for the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreams. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, 
and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be fond, found of you, said the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Going through a pandemic can be very discouraging. Some have become sick. Others have lost loved ones and friends. The pandemic has impacted everyone in some way. The way we work, go to school, and even how we worship. Some have not been in church since March. There is disruption, frustration, and confusion about what to do next. I was talking the other day with Dr. Kelton Hinton a friend who works with Southern Baptist churches in North Carolina. And he said, you know, this is not the first time the people of God have been in a situation like this. He mentioned the Jewish exile in Babylon. He noted that those people had their lives turned upside down and they were cut off from worshiping at the temple. But God used the process to refine them and he was with them wherever they went. Since they were unable to offer sacrifices at the temple, they formed synagogues where they could study God's word together and pray. They began to concentrate more on their family. They received guidance from the prophet Jeremiah, which is found in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 5. And it says, Build ye houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there, and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace." The words God gave the exiles can help us. They could not worship as they had previously. Eventually, their temple was destroyed, and many of them were taken to a faraway land. Many of us are in situations where we cannot worship or come together for church as we have previously. Though our situation is not anything as bad as the exiles, we can learn from them. Some of their people were frustrated. They expected everything to get back to normal soon. They were looking for the exile to end quickly. Similarly, it is normal for us to look for the pandemic to end quickly so we can get back to life as it was before. However, it appears that this event will continue to have an impact upon our lives for some time, which is where we can get guidance from Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah essentially told the exiles to settle down and not look for a quick end to the crisis. He encouraged them to go on offense and build, plant, and pray. Build, build ye houses and dwell in them. So get busy doing your work, building a life, dwell in them. Dwell in these houses and enjoy that life. In our situation, this would be to get busy with our lives and ministry, taking precautions but not waiting for the pandemic to end. Plant. He writes, and plant and eat the fruit of them. To plant is to invest. When you plant, you assume that you or someone else will be around later to eat the fruit. They were to do the things that would be greater benefit later. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. In other words, do not lose sight of your family in the exile. Build or develop your children. Encourage them to get married and to have children. Plant strong families. And pray. Verse 7 said, Seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. 
for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Babylon was often hostile toward the faith of the exiles, and the Babylonians engaged in some terrible sins. Rather than disparage the Babylonians or conspire against them, they were to pray for them. They were to try to help them and to seek peace. The well-being of the exiles was tied to the well-being of their community. At the NAFWB general board meeting a few weeks ago, Free Will Baptists adopted the 3 for 30 plan for this decade. The plan is to reach, train, and give. Reach our community, train our people, and give our talents and treasure to further the gospel. You'll hear more about that later. But over the last few days, we've had some conversations with many of our leaders, and we believe this is a critical time. Perhaps the first initiative of the 3 for 30 plan should be the Jeremiah 29 initiative to reach our neighborhoods, to train ourselves and our families and our churches to reach our communities by praying for them and giving to them to help them to find peace. So how can we build and plant right now? Even though we went a long time without sports and distractions, research indicates that Bible reading has actually gone down in the pandemic. If we're going to reach others, we must begin by building ourselves into people who know and apply the Bible to our lives. We must plant the scripture in our hearts so we can be transformed into instruments God can use. So, as part of the Jeremiah 29 initiative, we're asking every person to spend at least some time, preferably 15 minutes, reading the Bible every day. When you read, ask these questions. What did the passage mean to the people who received it for the first time? What is the timeless principle? What does the Bible teach us or the passage teach us about God? And what do you need to do based on the passage? Now, if we do this, we will be transformed. And if you will go to nafwb.org and click on the Jeremiah 29 initiative, you'll find a bookmark with those questions. And it's a simple reminder to try to apply the word. You will also find some Bible reading plans as well as a link to the Randall House app that provides valuable resources in this area. We don't care how you do it, just please read your Bible. This would make a good church-wide campaign for the month of September. If you commit to reading your Bible and you tell your pastor and other folks at your church, think of how encouraging that this could be to your pastor and other leaders. On the same line, I really believe it is critical that we get our Sunday school classes, life groups, and other small groups meeting if they are not already doing so. This is key to building and planting. Though the groups may be smaller or even meet at a park or house instead of church or even meet on Saturday or other day instead of Sunday or even meet online, well, you get the picture. It is critical to be building and planting. So as more people get into the Word, it may be that more people begin to teach the Word. With social distancing, smaller classes or groups are more desirable, so please get into the Word and pass it on to others. Be busy making disciples. Pray. In October, we will be asking our people to pray 15 minutes a day. This is a great time to pray for your neighbors as instructed in Jeremiah 29, verse 7. Please pray for the nation, for the upcoming election, and your pastor. Remember, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Tell your pastor you're praying for him. Again, how encouraging it is to hear that the majority of the people in your church are praying every day. So we encourage you to pray for your community and to consider walking through or driving through your neighborhood and praying for your people. In November, we will ask people to commit to making time for spiritual conversations with their family. This coincides well with Thanksgiving. Just as Jeremiah instructed Judah not to lose sight of their families during the exile, we also must not lose sight of our families during the pandemic. 
the pandemic has provided more family time for many. Let's identify that as a gift from God, a time to plant that will enable our family to survive the storms of life. Let's read the scripture, let's pray together, and let's even minister together. Now sometimes when we think of family time and the word, we make it too complicated. This could be as simple as reading Psalm 1 before a meal, praying, and then talking about how to apply the passage during dinner. Maybe use some of the many Randall House resources that they have provided on family faith conversations. Randall House has provided a family-centered curriculum called Everyday Curriculum, which includes an app and other vital tools to help start and continue spiritual conversations with your children. Pastor, Randall House will even mail this curriculum to the families in your church. So I encourage you to take advantage of these resources. Will you commit to helping your family? Where will we be in December? We may not be able to host some of the outreach activities we've enjoyed in the past. I've already heard about New Year's Eve fireworks celebrations being canceled, but we still need to reach out. The Lord said specifically to pray for them to have peace. It may be that some of you feel called to go a step further. Dr. Hinton suggested you might become a neighborhood outpost. During the pandemic, some churches created family-centered outreach. Often a husband and wife and children, uh, they walked through a neighborhood and they checked on people to make sure that they were okay. And I think this is in the spirit of what Jeremiah is getting at in this passage. Perhaps this might even lead to an opportunity for neighborhood Bible studies. Feel free to use some of the memes on our website as a means to discuss an issue and read scripture. Usually though, when we think of Jeremiah 29, we think of verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. This was meant for these exiles. And God was saying, this bad thing that has happened is actually for your good. Perhaps this too is for our good. Yes, this is a very discouraging time and many things are outside of our control. But we can control how often we read the Bible, how often we pray to the Lord, those are things we can do no matter what happens in the future. And yes, everyone is a bit frustrated and confused. This allows us to focus on our family and build something that will last. Perhaps our neighborhoods are more receptive to the gospel than previously. Let's pray for them to have peace and to do what we can to point them toward the gospel. Build, plant, and pray. It worked for those exiled to another country. Let's make it work in the current pandemic. Do you set aside time every day for you and the Lord? All of us need to have a period where we pause to be with the Lord. If you have never developed a time like this, I hope what we are about to share will be helpful. And if you have a quiet time already, maybe something here can help enhance it. The first step is to stop everything and be still. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Now the psalm is about getting through the worst day of your life. The psalm begins with, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. A day when the mountains fall into the middle of the sea, it's a bad day. So this psalm is about how God gets us through the worst days of our lives. And really, every moment you spend with God prepares you for the day when some tragedy will come upon you. What does God mean by being still? 
He is telling us to remove all the distractions, turn off the television, put away the computer, and of course, silence the phone. No peeking at social media. For just a few moments, be still and focus on God. Focus, expecting to hear from Him. Pray this prayer from Psalm 119, verse 18. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. If you expect to get something out of a sermon, lesson, movie, or book, you're more likely to do so. How much more should we expect when it is God we are hearing from? What does He want to say to us? What does He want to change about us? Expect to be changed from reading the Bible. In my work with people over the years, I've encouraged them to read the Bible. And I remember reading about Rosaria Butterfield's conversion. She had been a lesbian, openly antagonistic toward Christianity. Today, she's a vibrant Christian, a pastor's wife, actively engaged in ministry. One day before she became a believer, a transgender friend told her, this Bible reading is changing you. And indeed, it was. Expect the Bible to change you too. And people will notice, just as they noticed that Peter and John had been with Jesus. It helps to have a quiet time in the same place and at the same time. For much of my life, I help people leave bad habits behind and develop some good habits. It might not sound spiritual, but having a quiet time involves the development of a good habit. In Mark 1, 35, we see Jesus had the habit of getting up early and going to a solitary place for his quiet time. I tend to get up early in the morning, and my solitary place is the kitchen table. And part of this habit is that I always have my coffee, water, my Bible, and a pen. I also tend to have a study Bible and a journal and often some other tools. You may have a different place. I used to commute to work for one to two hours one way every day. And no matter how early I got up, I could hear in the back of my head, traffic is building. A one-hour commute could turn into a two-hour commute with one minor accident. So I began to have my quiet time in my car. I would start out early and listen to various Bible passages, usually an Old Testament passage, a proverb, a psalm, and a New Testament passage. And once I beat the traffic, I would stop at Cup of Joe in Raleigh, North Carolina, and get my coffee. As I enjoyed my coffee, I would spend some time reading the scripture in my car. And there's something about holding the Bible, reading it, and marking it. The point is, you do whatever works for you. But when you are in that particular place and it has become a habit, you feel a pull to have your quiet time. As you read, ask God to reveal His character to you. Consider praying Psalm 29 verse 4, Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. You might use one of our prayer journals uh, to help you out or a journal of your own that you can write down some of the characteristics of God. Enact Psalm 29 verse 2. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. God tends to work in our hearts and make His desires our own when we pray, not my will, but thy will be done. And as we delight in His Word and in Him, that relationship begins to develop, deepen, and to grow sweeter. This process is enhanced by asking four questions. Ask yourself, what did this passage mean to those who received it the first time? It helps to have a Bible handbook like Unger's or a study Bible. I have a study Bible on my iPad, and I like to look up the introduction of each book. I also focus on the time period in which the people who received the message the first time lived. That helps me to have a context as I read a passage. I also ask myself, what is the timeless principle? Take Psalm 46, which was mentioned earlier. This may have been written during the time when Sennacherib was threatening King Hezekiah with invasion. 
But the principle is true for you too. This psalm is the backdrop for Luther's hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And as one takes all of this into consideration, it becomes clear that the principles in this passage have helped God's people throughout history. At this point, it helps to ask, what does the passage teach me about God? In the example of Psalm 46, the passage teaches that God helps me and protects me in the most difficult of times. I can depend on him. And then the final question is simply, what do you need to do based on this passage? The value of a quiet time is that it enables us to examine our lives daily. We are instructed to ponder the path we are taking. If we pause and reflect upon how we are living in light of God's Word, it is like a regular checkup. Rather than comparing ourselves to others or to the world, we want to hold up the Word of God like a mirror, which helps us to get back on track as we look at every area of our lives. Over time, we learn that as we give our relationships, finances, and family, and all the other parts of our lives to the Lord, we're happy, even if we fail, when we live out the Scriptures.